We've talked about human resources and the function it provides in organizations. So we're going to bring back that topic, and it's really, really good because the Society of Human Resources Management is having another information-packed session. I have two friends of mine right now, Jin, who I have not seen in many, many moons. Mm -hmm. Hafadeh, welcome back to KU. Hope you like the new couch that we got. Thank you. It's very, very, very comfortable. Setup. Thank yeah. you. And a new friend to the island and certainly to the island's HR mm -hmm. um, industry, Fran Seppler, so from, by way of upstate New York. At some point, also, also <laughs> Minneapolis. Yes. So half a day, we welcome you to the island, and we hope we are being very hospitable host. Thrilled to be here. Yeah, and the civility, and I would say in the hospitality, is something that we as islanders really take to our core. It's mm -hmm. who we are. To deviate from that is a great embarrassment to us. And that is actually the topic that uh, you'll be discussing, correct? That's correct. Okay, so uh, Jean, can you give us maybe a little bit of a backstory, a little bit of context on what's going to go on? Sure. So the Sherm Guam chapter, we're having two events, and Fran's going to be... Um, pushing both training programs on Wednesday and Thursday. It's the topic of this is respect and civility training. Mm -hmm. So the first day it's going to be more for the employers and it's based on respect in the workplace. The second day is the same training but more for supervisors and we're titling that the leading for respect. And Fran is known for her pioneer work in harassment prevention programs. Um, she was commissioned by the EEOC to do all these trainings. So we brought her here to talk about this topic because it's well needed here mm -hmm. in our, especially our culture. So I'll pretty much have Fran um, talk about what she's going to discuss in these training programs, which I know we're all going to be, um, you know, it would be helpful for all of us. And if I might, Fran, I mean, you probably know this already in your, in your pre-research coming out to the island, but Guam is so heavily influenced by the Catholic Church and by the U.S. military, and we have positive relationships with both, that that tends to carry over to all aspects of of life and of business here. And, you know, like you have respect for yourself, mm -hmm. have respect for others, you know, um, immense respect and reverence for women, for the elderly, teaching, you know, young people and, and things like that. So how does that all play into, you know, your presentation on respect and civility in organizations? Well, I, I love the idea that that is an existing value that is here and present. I think we take for granted that if people want to be respectful and civil, they know how to do it. Mm -hmm. As our work gets more complicated, as we're dealing with stress in the workplace, as we're dealing with people who are different from us in so many ways, we have to really think about and learn what it is that makes people tick. And if we can take a few hours and talk about respect and fairness and civility and psychological safety, suddenly you see people understanding that they can make choices every single day that are going to create good feelings for the people around them. And when you make that choice every single day, suddenly the climate of your workplace changes. So this is about giving people tools and skills, assuming the goodwill is already there. Mm -hmm. Now, it was interesting how I, how I framed the discussion, you know, saying that, you know, we have these virtues that we have and everything like that in business in particular, in the private sector, very often that doesn't always necessarily apply because um, there's also things that we believe here that if you have worked and cut your teeth and worked your way up the, up the corporate ladder, to a certain degree, you can treat your underlings, you know, like you can really be a hard charger to them. Some people would say you can treat them like crap. Um, but that really does have, have a psychological effect on people when they're just coming up or, you know, like regardless of where you fall on the organizational chart, I would assume. So you heard me use the term psychological safety. Mm. That's simply the idea of being unafraid at work, not being afraid of your boss yelling at you, not being afraid that if you make a mistake, you're going to lose your job, not being afraid that somebody's going to laugh at your idea. Uh, and, and what we see in a very robust literature is that when organizations can accomplish a degree of psychological safety, their performance takes a straight line up. It affects the business outcomes of the organization. That's been tested everywhere from tiny little organizations all the way up to behemoths like Google, where, uh, where they found that psychological safety was an essential part of successful teams. Mm -hmm. So this is about sometimes teaching leaders that the things that were done to them or the things that they can do aren't necessarily going to create the best outputs, the best execution, the best work products. Because and HR is ever evolving, you know, the, the, yeah. the science and the practice of what makes a good leader and what makes a good or functioning organization is always changing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And most business managers don't spend a lot of time thinking about neuroscience, but once they understand it, they realize they can create reactions in their employees that are going to make those employees want to work harder. Fascinating. It is. Okay. And um, you and I were talking before the segment this, but you know, it bears repeating now, like as we're, as we're taping this, is societally there have been a great many changes particularly when donald trump took office but you know people saying you know it's the whole era where like as the young people would say they got woke you know they became enlightened into into social change you know there was the second maybe even third or fourth wave of feminism there's a whole me too movement there's people mm -hmm. believing that um 
I now understand you know, what, what my rights are as a citizen of the world and everything like that. So when it comes to civility and respect, I would assume that has unbelievable bearing on that. And probably a lot of people who would listen to your presentation would say, that makes perfect sense. I never thought about it, but you know, I'm all on board with that. What I try and do is I turn, try and turn people's uh, thinking about this upside down. I think things like Me Too have really put an emphasis on justice, punishing bad actors, creating mm -hmm. stronger rules, um, condemning people who engage in bad behavior. And that's all good and well. But we know that just telling people not to hurt each other doesn't work. We actually need to teach them how to behave differently. And so by substituting behaviors that are positive and constructive for behaviors that can create fear or a sense of disrespect, uh, we give people sort of a, a very simple menu of ways to avoid getting themselves in trouble, but also, again, to be additive and positive in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, now, Jin, you were saying mm -hmm. that the, the first session, right, is yes. for the second, I, let me start backwards. The second session is for supervisors and maybe more managerial types. Yes. Would you recommend that if you're someone like a middle manager, even maybe a business owner, you know, an executive, they attend both sessions? Well, the, first, the second day will be, it's going to be the same session for the morning and the afternoon. So it's, she's going to be covering the same topic. It's her supervisors. Mm -hmm. So they can pick either the morning or the afternoon session. The only difference between the first day and the second day is once for employers, the skill modules are different for the employer section versus the supervisor session. Okay. Yeah. So we... We spend a lot of time going through the fundamentals with both groups. Employees practice giving and getting feedback, mm -hmm. having conversations about how you're treating me uh, and, and what I'd like from you. And also they practice bystander intervention, what to do when you see somebody else being treated in a way they shouldn't be treated. How can you be an ally? Uh, what are the skills you can bring to the table to do or say something that might help somebody out? And then for supervisors, we're training them more on how to deal with a distressed employee. When an employee comes to you and complains, how do you respond? How do you help them? And also, when you've got an employee whose behavior is not quite where you'd want it to be, how do you coach that employee? Mm -hmm. How do I have a conversation with you that says you're a great employee, but you've got some behavior that's a problem? So we introduce a coaching model and we have them practice it. All right. Well, Jim, we got to go. We got about 15 seconds, but can you let people know that if they, there's probably going to be a line yes. out the door of people that want to take advantage of this. So how can they attend? Well, we actually have a waiting list. Um, both days are already capped off, uh, mm. but you can take a look at the website at guam.sherm.org. Um, or just contact us. Uh, you can contact me, 747 3592, if you have any questions, and we'll be sure to help you. Okay, well, Jen, thank you as always. Good to see thank you, you again. And Fran, we hope you have a wonderful trip on Guam. We hope we feed you very, very well. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and we're, we're unbelievably um, honored that you would spread the message of respect and civility here, because that's something we really mm -hmm. cherish. As thank I you so much. All right, have a wonderful trip. Thanks. And sit tight, because we are back right after this.